The African painted dog is amongst the most endangered species in the wild in Africa. Through efforts to relocate 24 of them from a national park in South Africa to a national park in Zimbabwe, an extraordinary story emerged, demonstrating for the first time a major trade in the animals, reaching all the way to China. Dogs in South Africa, in theory, they're protected. But zoos want new bloodlines all the time. The only way to get them is, is wild stock. So, you know, a zoo trade is feeding an illegal trade of dogs being pulled out of the wild. Our undercover investigation with animal dealers confirms these claims. People all think it's because they're very rare in the wild, everybody thinks they're highly protected, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so you, the origin is from the wild? Some of the origin is from the wild, some is from, from the breeding center. How many do you work in China? 200 or 300, I don't know. So many, yeah? Yes. All from South Africa? Yes. The painted dogs were sent to zoos that treated their animals like this. The trade in captive animals is creating a financial incentive for people to remove animals from the wild so that their offspring can then be sold as captive. If you take animals out of the wild and sell their offspring, you're, you're laundering animals. Yet to date, the official institutions meant to protect the African painted dogs have claimed that the trade does not significantly affect the existence of the species in the wild. Is the legal trade indeed marginal, or is it putting the species at risk with the involvement of officials and zoos in China, Europe, and the US? There had been rumors in the last few years about some uh, trade of uh, live animals taking place in southern African countries. But the evidence you're putting to us today is, is, uh, is uh, uh, really a real breakthrough. The African painted dog, or as it is commonly called, the wild dog, from a half a million across the continent a hundred years ago, today there are believed to be only 3,000 left in the wild due to loss of habitat and hunting. Called the devil's dog by colonial farmers, they are in fact highly intelligent and social. Unlike lions, for example, they feed their young first. The dogs are not only highly endangered, they're also uniquely social. They're one of the few species that looks after their sick and their weak. And also they feed their pups first. They hunt cooperatively, they do everything together. They can't afford to lose individuals from the wild. Our story begins with Dr. George Indermauer, a radiologist who through his travels in Africa became dedicated to the dog's survival. He tried to save 24 wild dogs from overpopulation and possible euthanasia at Palanisburg National Park in South Africa. Ik ben uh, door de leiding van het Nationale Park Pilanesberg geïnformeerd over het feit dat ze twee roedels hadden in het park, waarvan één roedel te veel omdat de druk, de predatiedruk op de prooien, dus de jacht op prooien, te groot werd en de prooien daardoor in de hekken gejaagd werden. He arranged to move the painted dogs to painted dog conservation in Wangi National Park, a center for rehabilitating African painted dogs into the wild. Due to delays in permits from South African authorities, the dogs were left for almost a year at Mafunyani, a private game reserve owned by Manus Pretorius, a self-proclaimed international trader in quality wildlife. When permission from South African authorities was finally granted, George and the team from Painted Dog Conservation came to the facility to collect the dogs. They were told they could only take 16 of the original 24 because one female was pregnant and another seven had died. They were clearly told that the dogs were indeed one family pack. 
Uh, it's one pack, isn't it? It's one pack, and it has and been. They've no been problem. together in this enclosure for in here since the fifth of November. It's not too. No. So the dogs were tranquilized to prepare them for the trip to Zimbabwe. Once the dogs were in Zimbabwe, Rasmussen knew that there could be some problems facing them after being held for so long in captivity. That year and a half in captivity will have greatly impacted on the chances of these dogs to survive. However, we are going to do everything we possibly can to make sure that as many of them do survive. It was only after the dogs were released into the wild that Rasmussen suspected a problem, that many of the painted dogs may not have been wild at all. Of the 24 dogs from Palansburg, we only received 16. One female was pregnant, so we couldn't take her, and we were told that the rest had died. When we got back to Zimbabwe, we realized that some of the dogs were not wild, as we'd been told. We checked on the photographic identities of the dogs and did study that very closely and found that we could only find two matches of the original 24 dogs in Pilansburg. So it was quite clear that a number of the dogs had been switched. Of course, the consequence for the dogs that we received that were captive, once they were released into the wild, it was a death sentence. Where all the dogs are, who knows? They could end up in horrendous conditions in China, they could end up on canned hunting, who knows? Only the dealer can tell that. Following Rasmussen's observations and allegations, an undercover reporter tried to trace the dogs. He posed as an Asian animal dealer to Manus Pretorius, owner of Mafunyani. Pretorius indeed claimed to have traded with China and in offering painted dogs, claimed some had wild parentage. This at least confirmed Rasmussen's allegations that traders were taking animals from the wild to create new bloodlines for zoos. F2, second generation? Yes, second generation. Captain, please. Yes, second generation. So it means uh, you have uh, two or three parents from the wild? Yes. I've been for the last 10 years with African wild dogs. Yes, so you, the origin is from the wild? Some of the origin is from the wild, some is from, from a breeding center, two different breeding centers. If I put them here together for two months, then they're fine. You know, there's, there's no problem. Well, I've delivered to Dalian Zoo. Dalian is also in China. I've delivered to Canada. Uh, you know, so I've delivered quite a lot of them. I just, uh, two months ago, I delivered 20 dogs to, to Beijing. It was 12 uh, males and 8 females. It went to, uh, just about, I can give you, I can't remember out of my head, but just a minute. Following Pretoria's lead, we went to China to meet the Changen Trading Corporation. First, we quickly confirmed that Changen was indeed trading with Pretorius and Mafunyani, this time with a shipment of cheetahs. Our undercover investigation into the Tianjin Corporation did indeed confirm that they had bought painted dogs from the South African dealer, Menace Pretorius. Why a dog? Last year, by 20, this year, I, I, will, I will buy again six or seven, uh, 10 liter. It's a common animal in China. Many Chinese do have wild, wild dog. And Chang Zhu confirmed that they had bought 16 African painted dogs from Changjin Trading Corporation.
Dalian Zoo confirmed it had bought painted dogs from Pretorius for an amount totaling 80,000 US dollars. For 20 dogs, you pay 80,000 dollars. 80,000 dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We couldn't confirm whether any of the transactions included the original dogs from Palansburg. However, we did find out the conditions dogs were kept in in Changsa and other zoos. The conditions are in clear violation of the World Association of Zoos and Aquarium's own code of ethics, which states, exhibits must be of such size and volume as to allow the animal to express its natural behaviors. These conditions did not only apply to the painted dogs, but to other animals in the zoos as well. None of these zoos were, admittedly, signatory to the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Meanwhile, Chanjin Corporation claimed not to care about the conditions, but was only interested in doing business. The Chinese zoo, sir. Where the sister? No problem. No problem. Where do they have rabies? No, 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 don't have rabies. I don't, I don't care about this. Just sell. I, I want to buy against now six. And how many wild dogs are there in China? Now? Yes. Now it's in 200. But it's not only Manus Pretorius who has exported the painted dogs, many of which were proved to have been captured from the wild, according to internal zoo documentation. There are other dealers as well. What, uh, what price is 12 dogs and when can you deliver? I will give you the price one animal. The price is 2,500 US dollars, transport included. A major South African trader claimed to have sent hundreds of painted dogs overseas. I've exported more than 200. Oh, it's so simple. I mean, I export lots of dogs. I've taken more than 100 to China in the years. All the big parks in China have got lots of dogs now. Uh, I took to the Bronx Zoo last year in, in, in America. We took two females and four males. I've got 17 puppies already. I took to Denver Zoo in the States. I took four animals, two males, two females. And I've had 23 babies in two years. Wild dogs going to Pittsburgh Zoo. You can see there are four dogs going to Pittsburgh. Two. Uh, 3.2, five going to Pittsburgh. The dogs aren't even CITES. It's not even CITES. It's not even CITES 3. Wild dogs are nothing. I can get a pervert in one week here. Wim Verbergmus is the European breeding coordinator for wild dogs. Every European zoo that wants to breed dogs must seek his permission. He has seen the conditions of the Chinese zoos and claims that the wild population should not be touched. What I have seen in the reportage, that would I not want to send my dog to them. Why not? Because I can clearly see that they are in bad circumstances, small stays, not good enough to protect from the visitors. Uh, kunnen mensen stenen gooien of, of, of naar de dieren, de dieren pesten. Ja, dat, dat vind ik ook al niks. Die, die, die populatie wilde honden staat in de natuur ontzettend onder druk en daar moeten gewoon geen dieren vandaan komen. Greg Rasmussen claims that the trafficking in painted dogs is in fact seriously hurting the viability of the wild population. When there are dealers involved, when there's a trade, dogs have got to come out of the wild in order to feed that trade. Dogs in the wild can't take that kind of punishment. We know, for example, that there's at least 200 dogs in China. Well, that is actually represents 10% of the population in the wild. With that kind of trade, it's just got to stop. and The dogs have got to go into CITES. 
CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, is an international agreement between governments. Its goal is to ensure that international trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival. But the painted dog is not listed on CITES, and the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, also does not list the animal as being commercially traded, contrary to what we have seen in this report. The IUCN should be able to see the point that the trade in captive animals is creating a financial incentive for people to remove animals from the wild. The trade creates an incentive to remove them from the wild so that their offspring can then be sold as captive. And if the point is that we want to prohibit trade that has an adverse impact on the so, wild population, then clearly we want to prohibit trade in the first generation offspring because that just creates an incentive to take the parents out of the wild so that you can breed from them and then you can call them captive and then you can trade with them. It seems clear that uh, the African wild dogs are being taken from the wild and since the wild population is very small this is obviously contributing to endangering the species and that surely is the crucial point that we should consider as to whether they should be listed on CITES or not. Bart Stays, a leading member of the European Parliament, got the full Parliament behind a resolution that there was significant trade in African painted dogs affecting the population in the wild, and that the dogs should be listed immediately on CITES. Yeah, this is a treffend. Er is blijkbaar een staat van ontkenning in de Europese Unie en bij de Europese Commissie en bij heel wat verantwoordelijken een staat van ontkenning dat er een erg grote handel is in Afrikaanse wilde honden. Deze getuigenis zegt het heel duidelijk. Er zijn meer dan wilde honden genoeg in China, dus de handel is zeer intens geweest de voorbije jaren. De man zegt het zelf, je hebt al een televisie, ga je er nog eentje bij kopen, nog eentje bij, de markt is gewoon vol en de prijzen dalen. Dit is het bewijs dat de handel in wilde honden uit Afrika enorm is geweest. En, en we lopen dus een beetje achter de feiten aan, reden te meer om nu echt een halt toe te roepen aan wat er gebeurt. Finally, we were able to show the evidence in this film to Dr. Claudio Salero, an internationally recognized expert in carnivore conservation and chair of the IUCN Canid Specialist Group. Well, it is shocking, uh, simply shocking, uh, that there are so many animals that have been exported and that are kept in such uh, uh, such uh, appalling conditions. So there's no doubt about that. And also means that the figures we had as to how many wild dogs might be in captivity globally are obviously an underestimate. Um, it's it, it, from the point of view of securing the, the, the long-term persistence of these species, that is what concerns us, is uh, certainly unacceptable. Traditionally, uh, trade hasn't been an issue on conservation of wild wild dogs. That doesn't no longer seems to be the case. Um, with uh, these mass exports of animals to China and um, presumably to, to zoos elsewhere. Uh, and therefore, uh, it's becoming uh, apparent that we need to consider wild dogs uh, for CITES listing. In this case, we were unaware of trading being a significant issue in African wild dog conservation. But on the light of what I've seen, uh, this is a, a cause of great concern and one that should be tackled. Clearly the trade is an unethical one. Whatever the law might say about this, and uh, I would argue that the law needs to be changed. Op dit moment weten we totaal niets van transacties. We weten absoluut niet waar die honden naartoe gaan. Ze zijn als het ware vogelvrij en dat moet zo snel mogelijk veranderen. Vooral door ze op de citeslijst te plaatsen. It's just unbelievable. It's, you know, they need, they, this trade needs to be regulated. I personally don't think that we should be capturing and uh, removing any wild dogs from the wild. As of 2009, the African painted dog is still not listed on CITES. 
Of the original 24 dogs from Palanisburg, only two survived. However, these two dogs are caring for five orphan rescued pups. They are all being rehabilitated to move back to the wild.